Hi, my name is Roman and I'm a Customer Success Manager at Toloka. Let's continue to dive into crowdsourcing approach. What should you do with the collected answers? Most crowdsourcing tasks rely on overlap. You don't need it if the goal is to collect photos, record videos, write a short text or something like that. These types of tasks don't have one correct answer, so it is a good idea to use post-verification for them. For most other tasks, consider using overlap. So how does it work? You assign each task to multiple performers and aggregate their answers to get true labels. This stage determines whether you can get the most of the results. Aggregation can be a real science, but don't worry. We added built-in aggregation algorithms to the locker, so you don't need to code them by yourself. Let's look at the basic example. We have an image classification project where we want to label each image as a cat or a dog. For a given image, three performers complete the task. We want to use their answers to make a final estimate. If we believe in the wisdom of the crowd, we need to trust the majority. In this case, two performers think that there is a cat in the image. And so do we. This mechanism brings us to the simple yet practical aggregation rule called majority vote, which takes the most popular label and uses it as the final answer. Majority vote is good, but can we do better? Well, majority vote treats all the answers equally. However, the crowd is diverse, and some performers may naturally be stronger than others. This intuition brings us to the weighted majority vote algorithm. So let's add the quality of answers as a skill coefficient in our task. In this example, the total skill of performers who selected the cat option is 0.8. The first performer contributes 0.2 and the second performer contributes 0.6. However, the last performer has a skill of 0.9 and outweighs the majority. Overall, in this example, weighted majority vote gives the correct answer because it carefully accounts for the difference in performance abilities. Note that the key ingredient of weighted majority vote is performance skill. How do we get their skill levels? We can compute the accuracy of performers on questions with known answers called control tasks. They are also known as golden set or honeypot. We mix control tasks in with normal tasks. We can check the answers and find out the percentage of correct responses for the project as a whole and the percentage of correct responses for individual performers. In general, majority vote is a powerful tool. First, it's very intuitive. Majority vote is easy to explain to a pr practitioner, even if they have no background in statistics. Second, it is very efficient. Majority vote is easy to implement, and it can be computed very fast, even on huge datasets with parallel processing. Well, finally, it is often pretty accurate. Remember, we can use quality checks to filter out weak performers and smart motivation techniques to engage performers in the task. Combined with these methods, majority votes often achieves a reasonable accuracy without much additional effort from the requesters. We took into account that the performers are different, but we only know the answers to a small number of questions. So our estimates of performance abilities may be inaccurate. Can we do better and use questions without known answers to estimate the abilities of the performers? Yes, we can. This method was proposed by researchers called David and Skeen. Here's an example. We have a small data set with four images. Our goal is to classify each image as a cat or a dog. We recruit three performers, and each of them labels all four images. In this example, we don't have any control tasks. So, 
How will we aggregate the responses? The David Skeen method simultaneously finds answers to the questions and performer skills that agree with the observed data the most. It may sound challenging, but let's try to work it out. These labels and skills don't look quite right for the data. Let's try another estimate. Here the second and third performers have a skill of 1. The answers are aligned with the answers of the strong performers. These look much better. The David Skin method does have some benefits. First, it's pretty general. So this method works under a more realistic model of performers with different abilities. Well, second, it is very efficient. Careful implementation of the David Skin methods can find a good solution in a reasonable time, even on large datasets. Third, it is practical. Recall that weighted majority vote estimates the abilities of performers by only using control tasks. In contrast, David Skin uses the whole data set to find the abilities of the performers. Fourth, it is accurate. In many real-life projects, the David Skin method increases the quality of aggregated data. In real projects, performers may have different abilities. Some questions may also be harder than the others. Let's take a look at the permutation-based model that captures these assumptions. The permutation-based model is built on two modeling assumptions. We assume that performers can be ranked in terms of their abilities. The higher the performer's ranking, the more accurate their answers are. Second, we assume that questions can be ranked by difficulty. The harder the question, the more likely that performers answered the question incorrectly. Of course, we may not know how they are ranked in real life, so the permutation-based model only assumes that the ranking exists, without any knowledge of actual rank, of course. The best way to understand the model is by visualizing an accuracy matrix. For each performer and for each question, the accuracy of the performer on the question is the probability that they answer the question correctly. So we fill in the matrix with accuracies of all performers on all questions. For ranked performers and questions, the highest accuracy is in the top left corner and the lowest accuracy is in the bottom right corner. Now we need to find the components of the model that agree with the observed data the most, just like in the David Skin model. The permutation model is the most general model that we considered in this overview. It allows for performers with different abilities, and it also accounts for the diversity of the questions. Second, this model is very general, but usually algorithms find a good solution in a reasonable time. Finally, the generality of the model pays off with increased accuracy when the assumptions of the simpler models are not satisfied. Many factors come into play for picking an algorithm, but let me suggest a simple rule that you can use to find a reasonable starting point. The first question that you may ask yourself is whether the performers in your pool have similar abilities. If this is the case, then the simple majority vote is enough. When questions are of similar difficulty, but performers are diverse, you need to account for the difference in skill levels. If your project has many control tasks, then you can go with the weighted majority vote. Otherwise, David Skin is a good choice. More complex methods may require more data to learn from. I hope that the theory we discussed in this video will help you to get the most of your data.